I want to demonstrate to you the pulse counter that uh, I wrote for ESP32 Node MCU firmware. And you can see as I'm pushing this button that different values are coming back. So what is actually happening here is this is sending a pulse into the port, one of the GPIO ports. And let me clear this screen to start over. And when I hit the button, you can see that the current pulse counter value is at zero. It's unit zero, the threshold zero, threshold one are both false, the low limit is false, the high limit is true. Uh, so what I've got is a high limit of six pulses and it triggers a callback when you hit the six. So I just hit the button again and um, we don't get another callback. So let me do it one more time. And now you'll see that there's a second one. The, the bottom one says current pulse counter value two. That's threshold zero. And if you go back and look at the code that you can do inside Lua, the threshold is set right here, threshold zero and threshold one. Threshold zero is set at two and threshold one is at four. The lower limit's at negative six and the high limit is at six. So as you click through this button, you're iterating through all of the callbacks that come from the pulse counter ESP32 module. Okay, so in this example of a pulse counter uh, on the ESP32, the pulse counter module, uh, I am running two uh, channels. So channel one, I'm sorry, channel zero and channel one. And that's because the pulse counter allows for two, like a channel zero and a channel one where this could increment or decrement and this could independently increment or decrement the main counter. So let's show you what's happening here. I'm gonna go ahead and upload and run this code uh, to the ESP32 and then my pulse counter is at zero. So let's go ahead and hit one and you'll see there's nothing on the screen and I'll hit it a second time and you can see the counter value is two. Uh, it hit threshold zero, so let me just make sure you see the thresholds that are set up on this pulse counter. The threshold zero is two, the threshold one is four, the lower limit is negative six, and the higher limit is six. That's really important. So let's just hit this button one, two more times, and we should have threshold four. And indeed we do. Uh, now remember, the, the upper limit was six. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it again. Oh, well, actually, before I do that, the counter's at four. I'm going to hit this other button now, and it should go negative. It should actually subtract. So I was at four before. I should technically be at three. And when I went and hit it again, I'm now at two. So why is this? Well, the pulse counter lets you set up channel zero and channel one. And channel zero is set up in my at, like my other example where... Um, it keeps the counter as you increment, and here it reverses the counter as you increment. This is uh, the low control mode and the high control mode. Low being uh, the value on your control pin. Now you'll notice I'm not using a control pin, and so then it's just assuming low, and this reverse or keep is what it's counting on. And then the count increment and the count um, disable is really on, this is on the rising edge, it'll increment. And likewise on channel one, the rising edge, it will increment. Uh, it's just that it's, in, it's incrementing forward on this push button and incrementing, declining on this push button. So now let me just press this decreasing push button a whole bunch of times and I'll just keep clicking it. And you'll see it's actually gonna be counting negative. So see how the lower limit of negative six is getting triggered, and then the zero uh, callback is getting triggered, you get both of those triggered at the same time. Because when you hit one of the lower limits or the higher limits, uh, the pulse counter resets to zero, and uh, you get both events, a lower limit or high limit event plus the zero event. Uh, let me show you the zero event though, where let's, I'm going to go up, down on the counter. I'm not really sure what number I'm at right now. 
Okay, so we're at four. So I'm going to go three, two, one, zero. Well, there, now we're at zero. I'll go negative one, and then I'll go back to zero. Negative one, back to zero. So I'm going negative one, back to zero, and I get the, uh, the callback. So there's five callbacks. There's the zero callback, there's the lower limit callback, there's the high limit callback, there's the threshold zero callback, and the threshold one callback. And you'll see on this sample callback method, you get is threshold zero, is threshold one, is lower limit, is higher limit, is zero. Okay, I want to give you a much more practical use case for the pulse counter. I've got a stepper motor here attached to a 3D printed robot arm actuator, and I have a joystick to control the speed. So I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, stepper module. And you'll notice I've got it reading the joystick. And as I move forward, you can see the actuator is moving. But when it's done moving, it tells me I'm at steps of negative 483. Now, how does it know that? Well, the pulse counter is watching. I'm going to go the other direction, stop it from moving, and notice it's negative 185. So it's also keeping track of the direction pin. So the direction pin is the green wire over to this purple line into port 2. And so that is set up in the code to um, in configuring the pulse counter to um, right here. And then the pulse in is the stepper signal. And so when I do the joystick, oh, that's going to fall off the table, uh, you get that updated step count. Now, I also have the um, threshold set to a step min and a step max. And so when I get to a thousand steps, imagine that there's an end stop at a thousand steps or some kind of maximum distance. You would want to, here we'll go the other direction. Um, so this should take us to the negative 1,000 direction. Let's see where we're at right now. We're at negative 5, 2, 3. So at negative 1,000, we should stop because we have that threshold set up. So the pulse counter, there we go. It stopped. Uh, and notice it actually ended up at 1,004 steps. And that's because the joystick's just generating a PWM frequency, uh, which means by the time you get it turned off, um, you might have actually had more steps. But that's really important because you want to know the exact step count on a stepper. And so by using the pulse counter, you can uh, do really fancy stuff like keep track of where your stepper motor counts are at while you watch the use of, um, you know, just a standard stepper control board. This one happens to be the TMC2130, uh, and I'm thinking about using this in a robot arm. Now that I've shown you how to do the pulse counter with some buttons, I want to do something a little bit more practical with the pulse counter. This is a Hall effect sensor, and when you move it over a magnet, you can see that that uh, LED light goes on because it's detecting the magnet. So let's say you want to you know, measure the RPM speed of your spindle on your CNC machine. Maybe you'd uh, connect a magnet to that, and then you could start counting RPMs through this pulse counter. You clearly would not want to do that through a GPIO trigger. The pulse counter is ideal for this. So over here, I'm going to move the Hall effect sensor over the magnet. Uh, and you can see that you keep getting different callbacks uh, while it's doing that. Let's uh, set the high limit to 4,000 and the low limit to negative 4,000. And the thresholds are at plus 2,000 and minus 2,000. And then we'll save that and we'll run it. I am using the ESP32 for Lua workspace. Uh, that's part of chili pepper. Okay, our pulse counter is now set. I just moved the Hall effect sensor over the magnet, and you can see I get uh, a few callbacks. In fact, I get a whole bunch of callbacks. Look how many I got. Uh, this one was triggered at 2,000. This one was triggered at the high limit of 4,000. Notice you also get the zero event. Um, you're getting two events at the same time because you end up with the high limit hit and it resets the counter to zero. So you get both events. 
But just moving that over the magnet once, I got another 2,000, I got another 4,000, another 2,000, another 4,000. So we're getting a lot of pulses from this. Um, in fact, let me clear this just to show you one more time. Uh, and I will um, show you on screen. I just moved it over very briefly, and I got that many callbacks. Now, why is that? Well, when you zoom in on the oscilloscope, this is why. Uh, if I were to zoom way out, I'm down at the 100 microsecond uh, location, but if I were to zoom out to, let's say, the millisecond and uh, move the Hall effect sensor with the magnet, you see it's a pretty clean signal. In your code, you'd end up debouncing all of that, but you can see right there there's a lot of little noise, and so, you know, when you zoom back in on the oscilloscope, you'll realize that's why you're getting the pulse counter. Not a practical example, but at least it gives you a pretty good idea on what's really happening here uh, in the code. So let's go ahead, since we're getting so many pulses, let's go ahead and increase the high limit to the max that you can do, which is 32,767, because the min is a negative 32,768. And then let's go ahead and run this code. And it's uploaded. And I'm going to swipe the Hall Effect sensor over it again. Notice we're getting our threshold trigger at 2,000, but we also got a high limit trigger. Uh, you know, so at least we only got three triggers, so it does give you an idea uh, on how many pulses are just being generated and counted. You can count up to 80, 000, I'm sorry, 80 million pulses. It's an 80 megahertz clock that you're testing it with. The other thing that I want to show you is um, the filter. I do have a filter turned on. And the filter lets you debounce. Uh, it's the max is 1,023 clock cycles, which calculates out to only really be about 13 microseconds. That's not helping us too much. If I turn this filter off, in fact, let me do that. Um, you're gonna get. I'll save this and I'll re-upload. You get even more pulses when you um, scan over. So I'm gonna, you know, scan it over again. And uh, it, you end up, uh, you know, in an even worse case. I wish the filter could go higher or you could adjust the clock, but uh, that is not available in the hardware. The other thing I want to show you is that this example, I do have the pulse control enabled. And the pulse control means that you can have another GPIO, and in this case I have this button, and when you press it, you can change the direction or you can inhibit the counting. And so with that control GPIO, this ESP32 pulse counter does give you uh, some extra capabilities. So here I have it in reverse counting in low control mode. I keep the counting when that control GPIO right here is high. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let me resave and re-upload. Uh, I will run the Hall Effect sensor over it again to get a callback. Run it over again. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. I'm going to hold that button down and move the Hall Effect over. You can see that LED goes on. And then let's go back and look on the screen. And I'm getting negative counting going on. Uh, so I had a negative 4,000 lower limit hit. I have the negative 2,000 threshold zero hit. And so my, uh, you know, my reverse uh, setting in low control mode on the pin pulse control, which is this button, is reversing the count. And likewise, if I don't touch the button and I move over it, I'm getting uh, a positive count. So I'm getting like that high limit of 32,767. So the ESP32 pulse counter is quite the flexible um, uh, library. There's even a way to, you know, of course, uh, get the count manually. Um, so if you wanted to pull it instead, you can clear the counter uh, to set it back to zero. Uh, and you can even do things like attach, um, you know, another pulse counter on the same input pin uh, if you wanted to set up more than, say, two thresholds. Let's say you wanted three or four or more. And so there are uh, eight units that you can use, so numbered zero through seven. You pass that unit in there. Uh, so lots of flexibility.